fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hey yo silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains fought crime and criminals throughout the early western United States. But justice meant more to him than the letter of the law. His courage and daring could only be matched by his desire for fair play. And the man who deserved a second chance always found the Lone Ranger on his side. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young and adventure lay at the end of every trail. The Lone Ranger rides again. Tom Byerly rapped at the door of Mark Paulson's ranch house, then... Evening, Mark. You don't mind my being a couple minutes late, do you? Well, look who's here. Howdy, Carl. Howdy. Evening, Judd. <laughs> Say, I didn't know this was going to be a regular get-together. Gosh, Mark invites you to his party, too, Tom. How are you? Oh, fair to Midland, Carl. Well, Mark, what are these two old moss bags doing here? <laughs> Come to think of it, I ain't rightly sure I know what I'm doing here. What's on your mind, eh? Sit down. I don't mind if I do. Say, I ain't taking the last chair, am I? I'll stand, thanks. <laughs> well, it's your choice. Me, when the day's done, I kind of like to sit and rest myself. Expecting any more besides us, Mark? No, just the three of you, Judd. Well, uh, what's up? Anything wrong? Anchor after advice and counsel? <laughs> or did you just get us over here for a hand of poker, maybe? Huh? Poker? <laughs> now, there's a thought. One I moment. Did. Oh, sure. I might as well get to the point. I suppose each one of you is wondering why I asked you to drop in tonight. I reckon you had a reason. I did. Is something we can help you with? Tom, you've considered me a friend of yours over quite a period of time now, haven't you? Well, I should smile. And you, Carl? Why, sure. We ain't made a point of mentioning it, but in my opinion, we've all been pretty fair friends. So, Mark, if you aim to ask us for anything, Let's why... Let's see... Judd, you owe me something like $15,000, don't you? Huh? Well, yeah, yeah, I do, but... Uh... I want it. Oh, oh gosh, Mark. I, I'd sure like to oblige, but you're asking at a mighty bad time. Uh, tarnation, I don't know what to say. Here you are, I need a cash, and I can't give it to you. After you helping me out when I needed it. Only I, I could... don't need the money. Huh? Oh, you mean it's for somebody else, eh? No, I mean simply what I said. You owe me 15000 I let the note run past the date it was due. Now it's payable on demand. Well, I demand it. I don't savvy. Mark, you ain't sounding like yourself. Oh, yes. You, Carl. I wonder if you recall a certain killing, the murder of a fellow named Link Tucker. You... I see you do. What are you bringing that up for? You don't think that I... Did can... you killed him? <laughs> Certainly not. I know very well who killed him. Oh, that's a lie. You don't know anything of the kind. You couldn't. 
Why do you stand there and say things like that? Well, easy, you know... Carl, easy. I have a signed confession. It's in a secure place. It was signed by the killer just before he died. Just before he died? <laughs> you understand me, I see. Mark, what in blaze is this all about? Shall I tell them, Carl? No, you can't. You couldn't. Please don't. <laughs> These men are supposed to be your friends, aren't they? I doubt that they'd repeat it. No, wait, Mark. I, I... think I will tell them. Gentlemen, Link Tucker was murdered by Carl Sun. If you doubt my word, I can show you proof. Well, I'll be switched. You dirty skunk. Why'd you have to do that? Ain't it enough that my boy's dead without you raking up what was passed and forgotten? No. Mark, you must have gone clean loco. What's got into you? You'll understand before I'm finished, Tom, which brings me to your case. Hmm? To me? You were appointed the guardian of your niece, Ellen Chadwick. Her estate was put in trust with you. I wonder what would happen if tomorrow you should be asked for an accounting. I've done nothing I'm ashamed of. Perhaps not. But I'm quite sure an investigation would reveal that at least on one occasion you used Ellen's funds for your own purpose and lost a considerable part. How'd you know that? That's my business. I'm not a thief. That was cash I had to have. She'll get it back just the minute I'm able and if I'd told her about it first, she she would have said it was all right herself. You didn't tell her, however. Besides, she's a minor. Whatever the necessity or your motives, technically, you're guilty of a breach of trust. That's a criminal offense. Mark, Tom must be right. You are loco. Why, just yesterday, I figured you to be one of the best friends I had. Carl and Tom figured the same. Now you're acting like you hated us. I do. But quiet. Gentlemen, I've hated you for 25 years. There hasn't been a day in all those years when I wouldn't have given everything I possessed to have you just where you are right now. Today, for the first time, however, I have in my hands the power to ruin you. <laughs> you don't know how I'm enjoying this. 25 years? We ain't knowed you that long. You only came here about 15 years ago. And we've never done a thing to get you down on us. You've known me for only 15 years? Think back. Try to remember a young fellow who came here 25 years ago, fresh from the East. A young fellow who put every penny he had into a small spread and lasted about six months. Well, I don't recall no such fella. 25 years ago, you say? Yeah. Meaning that young fellow was you? It was. But I don't... So you don't remember, huh? Well, I do. I remember quite clearly. I remember how that young fella had hopes as high as the hills yonder. I remember how he looked at the little herd he owned and thought that someday that little herd would become a fine, big herd. And how he thought the West was a fine place to come to when it gave a man a chance at all the things he wanted most. Look here, Mark. Shut up! And I remember one autumn afternoon. It was cold and the sun hadn't shone for a week. But that young fellow felt so good he thought there'd never been weather to equal it. He was mending harness in a shed he'd built. And when he heard horsemen approaching, he thought that was fine, too, because now maybe he'd be getting acquainted with his neighbors. <laughs> if he'd had the sense of a loon, he'd have blasted them out of their saddle. Sure. Mark Paulson's the name. Glad you rode over. Grab him. Right. Hey, 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 man. What the... Drop that loop around the polecat's neck. I got him. What's the matter? What are you doing? Take that rope off. Let's go. <laughs> hey, that'll teach you to keep your mouth shut. All right, Tom, toss your end of the rope over that limb above you. There she is. Now, mister, any sudden moves and you'll be dancing on your toes. Let me go. You can't do this. You're getting what any other rustler would get. Steal our critters, would you? Blasted crook. Steal your cows? I don't know what you're talking about. You've made a mistake. You, you don't ain't mean... got a quit on your herd that wasn't stole. If you're going to blood brand, you'd better learn how to be slick about it. Wait, listen, I'm no thief. I didn't steal. I bought this spread from Maxwell. I can show you the bill of sale. No way. Get your lion and listen to us. But don't this you know... rope around your neck is just to show you we mean business. But you've got one chance to save your skin. Clear out. Vamoose. Make yourself scared. Do that, and we'll take back our cows and call it quits. Get stubborn, and you won't have nothing but a broken neck to show for it. Oh, wait. You've got to believe me. I paid money for this outfit. If the cattle were stolen, then Maxwell did it. Clear out or hang. Don't you believe me? I'm not lying. I put all my money in this you place. You heard us, I mister. Heard... 
We ain't here to argue. And I got a notion that you won't have so much to say when you're dangling from a tree. Remember that, gentlemen? I got out. What else could I do? Twenty-five years ago, there wasn't enough law west of the Mississippi to hold lynchers in jail overnight. And how could I alone fight the three of you and your crews? Sure, I got out. I left without a dime in my pocket, and for ten years I was just a cowhand drawing wages. But for those ten years I saved, and when I had money again I came back. And when I came back, I promised myself that the day would come when I'd square things. <laughs> I started over again, and when I found out you didn't recognize me, I made a point of becoming your friend. <laughs> well, here we are. Now it's your turn. Your turn, do you hear me? Let's see who's got the whip hand now. Mark, look here. You don't savvy. Back in them days, there was so many rustlers operating, and if you got careless, they'd steal you blind. Having to be on the prod all the time, we was bound to make mistakes once in a while. You made one too many. But we... I'll be as fair to you as you were to me. I'll give you the same choice. Get out. Turn over every last cow you own to me, or I'll break you as certainly as you broke me. You wouldn't. No? Try me. You can't break us. Would you want your wife to know her son was a murderer? You, you right. And you, Tom. Would you want it known that you had stolen from your ward? And Judd, just how much would you have left after repaying that 15000 You've been scheming against us for 15 years. 25. Well, I say a man like you ought to be stepped on like you'd smash a rat. You know your way out of here. Get out. Go home and try to sleep knowing what I can do to you. And tomorrow, I'll expect your decision. You're top dog now, Mark. You bet I am. But I wonder if you live long enough to enjoy it. Threatening me, huh? Well, Mark. Well, all right. I thought you'd gone to bed. I heard everything that was said in here. Well? Are you completely mad, Mark? You mean those things? I never meant anything more. You knew this story when I married you. I told you then what I planned. I thought you'd forgotten. No. I never dreamed you were like this. I know that any man would resent an injustice, but no man in his right mind would live on hate for years. I repay my debt. But, Mark, these people have been our friends. Tom's wife is my best friend. Why, our boy's been keeping company with Ellen... Mark, you aren't going through with this. I am. I say you're not. Don't interfere. I will interfere. I won't let you ruin their lives and ours. All right. Wait. Mark, have I been a good wife to you? Of course. Do you love me? You know I do. Then tell me you were wrong. Tell me you changed your mind, that you'll ask those men to forgive you. No. Very well, then. Honey, what are you going to do? I'm leaving you. You don't and mean... And I'm going along. Son. Moore's right. Ray, you're forgetting I'm your father. I'll do my best to forget. Why, you take your hands off of me. Come along, Ma. I'll hitch up the buggy and we'll go into town. Ray, you shouldn't... If you can go, I can. Laura, Ray. Goodbye, Paul. If you change your mind about things, you can find us in town. Wait. Come back here. I forbid you to leave. You hear me? I forbid you, Laura. Come back. Come back here. If you don't come back now, then don't ever come back. All right, don't ever come back. Mark. Mask. Get back inside. Will you? We're having a talk. A mile from Mark Paulson's ranch house, three horsemen had drawn up beside the trail and... I, I don't like it. Do you think we do? What else is there? Judd, do you think I'm just going to stand by and take with that skunk hands out? You think I'm going to watch him smash everything to smithereens? By heavens, I'm not. It's him or us. I suppose. We can't take too long to decide, neither. Well, Judd, are you with us? I still don't like it, but like Carl says, what else is it to do? Yeah, I'm with you. What'll we do, choose lots? No matter to me. We better not. But I tell nope, you... it wouldn't be fair for one to take the risk alone when he's helping all of us. We'll go together. Agreed? Right. Kino. Come on. Get up. 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 The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. With reputations, homes, and fortunes threatened by Mark, reluctantly came to the decision that the was to strike at Mark in the back trail to Mark's ranch. Ranch house, and... Oh, 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 boy. Oh, 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 Likely he's going to bed. It's his wife and boy we passed in the buggy hall. I'll hitch him to anything, though. No. We might be around to the back. You fellas take the front. Rouse the boys in the bunkhouse. Yeah, now. Get him up, Scout! Get him up! What was that? Somebody was... That man, you won't get Mark. Oh, oh, yes. My friend took Mark with him. You won't Don't slap on the street. street. Lightning. Oh. Who in blazes are you? That doesn't matter. You're turning back. A gunslinger. We might have known Mark would hire himself protection when he pulled a stunt like this. He didn't. Ah, uh, you... Take what you wish. The truth is, I protected you three. Yeah, it looks like it. You came here to kill. Go home and forget about it. This situation can be solved in a better way. Stranger, just how much do you know about this deal? All of it. Then you know why... If you're afraid I'll talk, you needn't be. I'll say nothing. You can take my word for it, neither will Mark. Now, on your way. All right, Silver, old boy. Now to meet Tonto. Come on, Silver. Ranger raced to the secret camp he shared with Tonto, his faithful Indian companion. Tonto, guarding Mark Paulson, jumped to his feet at the Lone Ranger's arrival. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, bring color all right. <laughs> I see you did, Kimasabi. What in blazes you fill us up to? What right have you got to bring me here? You're lucky you were brought. If Tonto hadn't been on guard outside your place, if you hadn't heard those fellows returning, you might not be alive now. Well... Well, I'm thanking you for it. Now, what more do you want? Why can't I go back home? Why should you wish to return? You have no home to go to. Your wife and son are gone. You had three good friends in the district, and you've turned them into bitter enemies. I doubt that any one man could damage his life more than you have done. I'll thank you to mind your own business. Do that, and let me mind mine. When you involve as many people as you have, it ceases to be your business alone. What is it to you? I doubt that you'd understand if I told you. Hey, I've... what are those papers there in your hand? You've seen them before. Where'd you get them? Well, you'd hidden them, of course. In the barrel of the shotgun you'd hanging on the wall of your bedroom. You, you stole them. I've known where this confession was hid ever since you first obtained it. Huh? That's what put me onto this. Tato and I were trailing Link Tucker's killer. We located the boy and saw you get the confession. We waited to see what you would do with it. You did nothing spite of the fact that the boy's father was supposed to be one of your best friends. So then we decided to wait a little longer to learn what you were up to. You blasted meddler. What would you do with these papers if I returned them to you? What do you suppose? Use them as you threatened? Why shouldn't I? As long as that's the way you feel about it, you don't get them. Watch him, Tonto. Me watch him. Hey, no. Watch what you're doing. No, you can't do that. Don't burn them. Wait. You can't do that. See them burn, Mark? moment they'll be gone for good. I'll get you. Stand back, Redskin. No, Out of no. my way, Blaster. Let me get by. Me. I'll fix that masked friend of yours. I'll show him. You will not move. I waited for years. It cost me plenty of money to get that evidence. Maybe I'll never have another chance. Your sidewinder, I... They're gone. Very well, Tonto. You can let him go now. Uh, gone. Gone. Burned to ashes. Well? Gone. You still want to get at me for burning them? Hey, I just want to get away from here. If you let me now. You're free to go. The Indian brought me. I have no mount. Town's not over two miles from here. You can walk it. Yeah. Town. Well. Well, I'll be on my way. No, what to do? That depends on Mark Kimosabe. I've got an idea, however, that on the way to town, he's going to learn some things about himself that he never knew before. It was late when Mark arrived in town. The two miles had been a tiring walk in high-heeled cowman's boots. 
But late as it was, Mark made directly for the place where he knew his wife would be staying, the home of an elderly widow. To his surprise, as he drew near the porch, a figure detached itself from the shadows. And the voice called out to him, Is that you, Paul? Ray? It's me. I sort of been looking for you, Paul. Where's your mother? She's right over here. Here I am, Mark. Honey. Yes, Mark. I... I've come for you. Hey, look, Laura, will you go back home with me, you and Ray, where you belong? You know why I left. That... That's over with. Mark, you mean that uh, you... The mask man spoiled it for me, burned the papers. They're gone. Oh. Oh, that's why you're here. Huh? Well, what's the matter? I can't go back, Mark. But, Laura, didn't you hear me? Didn't you understand? I said the papers are gone. I I couldn't prove a thing. Not even the judge owes me money. I thought you'd come for me, Mark. I'd hoped it would be different. But you haven't changed. You're still bitter. Only the circumstances have altered. Isn't that so, Mark? No. No, it's not so. Mark! I, I don't quite know how to put it. You can try. Well... Well, do you remember back when we were saving so we could buy a ranch? Do you remember how wonderful we thought it would be when we had our own place? Oh, yes. Well, we got it finally, and it was pretty nice. Only, somehow, it wasn't quite the great thing we'd expected it to be. Do you see? Everything we've ever wanted has lost its luster a bit when we've got it. Yes, I see. And that works both ways. Even when you hate someone the way I thought I hated those fellows, it wasn't anything very special when I found out I could get revenge. I guess the minute it was possible, I began to lose interest. But I was too stubborn to admit it even to myself. I saw it finally when that masked man burned the papers and when I walked here afterwards. You really mean this, Mark? Yes. Then prove it. Prove it by telling Judd and Carl and Tom. Tell them now. Tell them you're sorry, that you want yourself, that you'll do anything in the world to make it up to them. Please, for me. I will. Ray. Yes, Paul? Did you hear what your mother said? Get those men. Bring them here right now. Of course. Don't you know what time it is? To blazes with the time. Get them. <laughs> It was almost three hours later that Ray completed his errand. He returned with the three men Mark had interviewed under such different circumstances earlier that night. Well, you poor cat, what have you got up your sleeve now? It had better be important. Please, Judge, Carl, and Tom, let Mark tell you what he wishes to say. We ain't stopping him. All right, Mark, speak up. I've been talking this over with my wife. Forget what I said this evening, I... I didn't mean it. At least, I don't mean it now. That's over with. Carl, I'll say nothing about that confession. Tom, that other matter, well, that's your affair, not mine. And, and Judd, that 15,000 can wait. I told you I didn't need it. That's true, I don't. You can take your own time. Mm, yes, what is this? What's behind it? Nothing. Nothing beyond what I've said. Those threats... Well, I've forgotten them. I don't believe it. Oh, but you must, Carl. Mark is sincere. Men, I don't expect you to feel friendly again. I wouldn't blame you if you hated me as long as you lived. I'm not asking for friendship. All I ask is that you accept my word. That'll be easy. Thank you. On one condition. Yes? You say Judd can take his time paying you back. All right, make out another note saying so. I will. And give me and Carl back the proof he was holding over our heads. We'll tear it up, and then that'll be over and done with. But, Tom, I can't do that. Hmm? Those papers are already destroyed. How do we know that? A masked man burned them up. Uh, more tricks. I'm telling you the truth. A masked man? Your hired gunman? He'd be likely to burn up them papers, wouldn't he? What's the game? What do you figure to get by tricking us? Come on, tell the truth for once. How many times do I have to tell you I am? How many times in the past 15 years did you make believe you was our friend, which was just the same as a lie? Oh, Mark, if only the stranger hadn't burned them, he you could... He didn't. Burn them. I showed you those papers and let you identify them, Mark. But those weren't the papers that went into the fire. I saved them. 
I wanted to see what you would decide to do. If you had held your ideas of revenge, then I would have destroyed them. But but you didn't? No. Take them. There. Now they're in your possession again. The rest is up to you. Stranger, I'll never forget this. Judd. Yeah? That nuke. Here you are. Tear it up. Burn it. Do anything you want with it. It's yours. We'll make out another later, or I'll accept your word alone if you wish it. Mark, I... I... Oh, rats. I don't know what to say. The confession your boy signed, Carl. Thank you, Mark. And, Tom, the evidence I'd gathered against you. <laughs> if... If you'd like to give me a good kick where to do the most good, well, I won't say anything against it. Why, shucks, Mark. That ain't what I had in mind at all. I deserve worse. Well, look, Mark. You asked us over to your place this evening, and I reckon it didn't turn out so good. But what would have happened if the masked man hadn't taken a hand? Yeah, there's that. Only what I was thinking was that the four of us might get over to your place again tomorrow night. But I... Don't uh... interrupt me. When I made the suggestion before you butted in, look how you got yourself in a fine fix. I said last night we ought to play some sociable poker. But tomorrow will do just as well, and if you're for it, so are we. Now, what do you say? Why, the only thing I can say is that it's great to have real friends. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. Thank you.